Hey, welcome back to AP Stats. I'm Mr. Hayes. We're going through the Stats Meta Curriculum here. Um, we're starting Chapter 6 out of the Practice of Statistics. It's the second part of what um, a college board calls um, AP Stats is, I always forget what CED stands for, Course and Exam Description Unit 4. Um, I forgot to cover up the rest of this, so I was distracting myself. I know, it happens to me too. Um, this first activity, what ends up happening is students come into the room, and this is my data from last year, and will indicate somehow that how many kids there are in their family. So um, I had as low as one, as many as six, and so these are the probabilities I went through. So for example, I had one only child, I had five kids who, there were three kids in their family, I had two kids who were one of six, um, and again, just as a reminder, reducing these are not really needed because again, it makes the adding later on better. Um, if you already just keep everything in the common denominator, it also, it's also a good indication in terms of how many people are there. Sometimes kids will ask if they can put decimals down here. It's fine. Um, we'll come back to that later, but um, not necessarily needed at this point. So the first question is, is this a valid probability model and explain why? Now remember there are two components for it to be a val valid probability model. The first one is all the probabilities are between zero and one. And the second one is that they all add up to be one. And again, that's another reason why sometimes the fractions are easier than the decimals, because if the kids have all the decimals, they can't do it in their head, but they can very easily go one, oh, that's four, that's nine, 13, 14, 15, 16, okay? So anyway, so we have a valid probability model. Yes, you're gonna to have to check that at some point with an AP exam, I'm gonna guess, if they ask a question like this. Um, and then they go on and ask, is 5.7167 a possible value for x? And explain. And this is, most of the kids, again, very instinctively are like, you can't do that. You can't have part of a kid. Now, we'll come back to this, and we'll explain this later. This is called, x is called a discrete random variable here. as opposed to a continuous variable. Some students may remember this from advanced algebra or algebra two. Some schools teach that, I know we do. So discrete again, remember there's gaps in between. So for example, it'd be like the number of games a, um, a player played in, okay? You can't play in 15 and a half games. You were either in a 15th game or you were in a 16th game, but you can't be halfway in between. Um, opposed to, like somebody's weight, you can always kind of, depending upon how, how much you want to fine tune it, you can kind of get down as far as you want to go. So then they're going to, um, you're asked to make a histogram here. And again, do it on technology. Most, and I usually just say, go ahead and do it by hand and you get something that looks like this. And then you're going to describe it. So mine, our class said it was relatively symmetric. Some students usually like to say, well, there's probably some, there's a little slight skew over here because we have seven kids over here and only four. Um, so that would work. But again, if you drape the tablecloth over it, it's going to be pretty symmetric. The peak here you do also need to mention. So we have a peak at three because, again, that's going to be a rough indication of where the center is. Now for a couple of key points. Okay. So they're going to ask, okay, what's the describe in words what P of X is greater than three means and then find what P of X is greater than three is or greater than or equal to three is. And most kids, again, instinctively say, well, that's going to be the probability of having three or four or five or six, in our case, children at home. So the probability that a randomly selected student has three or more children in the family. Again, the verbiage here is important. So you have to talk about that. If you randomly select somebody, this is going to be the probability that we're expecting. So in this case here, we get 12 out of 16 because we are adding up five sixteenths and four sixteenths and one sixteenth and two sixteenths. Okay, so five, nine, 10, 12. So 12 out of 16. Then we go off and they asked, describe in words what the probability of X is greater than three means. And again, most students, regardless of what flavor of algebra two that they had, are pretty good about saying, well, obviously three doesn't include it. And again, given the fact that we're doing discrete random variables, and again, we haven't necessarily pointed that out yet. I'm doing that only so we don't have to refer back and forth and back and forth. 
again, since it's discrete, it's very easy to kind of see that, oh yeah, we got to take three out. So again, it's the probability that a randomly selected student has more than three children in their family. So again, here, this one is three or more. This one is more than three. So here, you don't include the 5 sixteenths probability that somebody has three in their family. So that's the difference between there. And it's obviously rather significant. Now, to find the average of the x values, what you students will go through, and so they would just add up 1 through 6 and find that average, and they get 3.5. Why are we looking for that? Well, because we kind of want to know what the average of our data is. So wouldn't we just add up all the different values of the data, so 1 through 6, and go from there? Well, obviously, the problem with that, and that gets into the next question, is... Does that value tell us the average number of children in the families in this class? Well, no, because the higher probabilities have a larger impact on the mean. So, for example, kids will say, well, three happens the most. That's going to have the biggest impact on the mean, which is obviously very, very true. So three, for example, I didn't close my parentheses there. I'm deeply, deeply sorry about that. Um, so to find it, what you're going to do is something called expected value. And what expected value does is it basically saves you a step. Because if we were to do this up here and find the average, we would go 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 5 plus 5 plus, oh, sorry, 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus, 3 plus, 3 plus, 3 plus and then do 4 4 is 1 5 2 6, divide them all by 16. We've already done all the dividing, and we already have the number of times things happen in the probability. So if we just take the value times the probability and sum all of that up, that will tell us the average number of kids per family. So in our current case, we have 3.4375. If you've ever seen the game show Deal or No Deal, this is basically how the banker does it. Now, they also take some psychology into it, but that's effectively what they do. What, how many cases are there, what's the probability of picking a given case, you multiply it by the value, and that's how much the average case is up there is worth. So anyway, that gets through here. We're going to specifically talk through expected value and random variables on the next page and the next video. So if you have any questions, please drop something down below. Oh, I forgot to say the copy of all these notes also down below. So feel free to grab those. And again, thanks to Statsmedic for making all this possible. Talk to you later.